new chapter, clustering library solutions or first section in there, basics of fault tolerance. Now clustering doesn't necessarily mean fault tolerance. You can cluster for two different reasons. One of them is fault tolerance. A server goes away, the other one keeps your, uh, your site up and running. The other one is for any number of one, of course. You can have a two cluster machine or two server cluster. You can have an N server cluster. And if one of them or two of them or M of them go away, then the other uh, can basically keep up the work. The fault tolerance that we build this way basically just means all of the other servers that we keep running are, well, keeping up the, um, the pace, keeping up serving our customers. And what we do here is we separate into many different areas. First of all, um, as we are a web application, we say, well, we'll need to make sure that um, Liferay is there, the Java server, Tomcat, WebSphere, whatever uh, you have there. The web application itself shall be there and shall continue to run. We'll definitely need the database. Most likely, um, well, this is a very abstract way. We also need our Elasticsearch or whatever search index or search, search solution we are operating. Uh, we'll need that. And as a minimum, if that is running, Liferay is running. It might not be reachable by your clients because you might have a, um, a load balancer that can also fail. Now the scenario that we look at here is uh, basically we look at a firewall which we don't cover in this training. Surprise, surprise. We look at the load balancer which we cover as a bare minimum in this training to have a load balancer but not how to make the load balancer fault tolerant. We don't care about it being fault tolerant because if your notebook fails uh, probably everything on it fails. Uh, we have the web tier which uh, is then, well, depends on whom you ask. Could already be your Tomcat uh, part or application server part, but I rather see that in the application tier here. That's the application server together with Liferay. And then we have the database, which includes, for our intents and purposes, also an elastic search or uh, the search solution here. Now, everybody here brought just a single notebook and we don't really operate a full server farm here. We have all of the Docker processes on a single notebook. I've started giving a hint why cluster. There's the two reasons for the cluster, uh, which is failover and performance. You want the cluster to continue to run and one machine might just not be enough to cover all of your load. We'll come to performance tuning in a later chapter. There are some options that you need to be aware of when you cluster Liferay. And this is basically just the checklist that you can go through. When you cluster Liferay, you will have an application server that is up or down, but uh, Liferay itself has certain levels of cache. And if you have a cache on one machine and you have a cache on the other machine, they kind of need to know of each other because if you change something on machine one, you don't want to serve the stale content from machine two. So as a, at a bare minimum, they need to know of each other that a certain object has been changed. Secondary, of course, uh, they'll need the same document store because if you upload to server one, you might want to download the same document from server two, so they better have a common store under them, including the database, including the, data, uh, the, the document store, including the search index, uh, and that's the basic functionality here, this is how you build a Liferay server. Pay attention to the caches, pay attention to the index and the document store, and you are almost set. Of course, it's not that easy. So this chapter is a little bit longer, but uh, the principle is there. It's actually quite easy. Now with a fault tolerance, again, uh, just a quick enumeration of everything uh, we do here. Uh, Fault tolerance is user load spike. Well, this is basically the load, but your system would fail if it's just overloaded by too many users. Scheduled maintenance, you might just tear down one server, uh, change the hardware, not necessarily these days uh, with virtual machines, but you might just uh, spin up a different machine. Emergency maintenance, so what are you doing when uh, one server actually goes up in flames and uh, just fails? hardware failure, unexpected system shutdowns, it happens, and uh, system intrusion, 
uh, which we don't really cover in depth because um, it's hard to cover anything there to know what you shall prepare for. Of course, you should be prepared, but what should you prepare for? Hard to say. What kind of intrusion is it? Your fault tolerance is setting up your system in a way that allows it to respond for failures. The main goal of fault tolerance is to maintain uptime regardless of system failures or necessary maintenance. Uh, what we didn't discover yet, or what I didn't mention yet, so this comes slightly out of order, is server affinity and session replication. And, uh, well, while I give you the solution now for the box, if you want to note it down, uh, the actual coverage will be in the next parts, next chapters, when we go into the technology. Server affinity means that when the server touches our servers, our cluster for the first time, we'll balance him to some server in our cluster, and then the sessions stick there. Session replication would also distribute all of that data to the whole cluster. But as I said, we'll discuss that in the chapter when it's actually on. Mm -hmm.